Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we are starting a new project, Kenwood TS450S. This transceiver has several diseases. The owner contacted me because he had no modulation in some modes. He told me that in first the RX is okay in all modes, FM, AM, SSB, CW, but TX operates in FM and CW but not in SSB and AM. At AM there is some hum, no modulation. Vox does not work in no mode. There is no DSP installed. Filter combinations cannot be the problem. I said to him, okay, bring it to me, I will see what I can do. And when he brought it to me, he told me there is another problem which uh, popped up the switching between RX and TX or better said from TX to RX when, you, when there was a transmission and then we switch back to RX has a very very long delay until it goes back to RX the delay is approximately 5-6 seconds I have seen several seconds another problem well First we have to analyze what the problems are and then we can start with debugging. The transceiver is connected to a DC power supply, 13 volt, <coughs> capability nearly 30 amps, power meter set in the range 200 watts and it's connected to a, a dummy load in the mode USB. When I go to transmit we hear the noise of the receiver. No output, I have no microphone connected, not necessary. We see on air this LED is lit. When I go to receive, still on air. Now on RX. Maybe as the, the box is switched off. I increase the delay of the box. Same behavior. Mode FM, similar. We will see we have output. We have output when I go to, to transmit. And when I go to receive, the output drops, but still we have on air and I can vary the output power. This is 20 watt, 30, 40, no problem. When I go to receive, the output drops, but still on air. But we have an output. You repeat it. And the current is still 10 amps, and now it is 1 amp. I will show you, show you the behavior of the ammeter. Even when there is an output, when I switch back to receive, we still have high power flowing into the transceiver. Same is in USB. We are still in mode FM. Here we have the output current, 10, 20, 30 amps. Output power, full scale 200 watt in mode FM. I go to transmit. You see here current flowing of 10 amps. I don't know whether it's okay or not. But when I reduce the power, current drops, increases. Okay, whether it's a bias, a hmm, little bit high, I think. But the most important thing is when I go back to receive, this output power drops, but the current does not drop. Still 10 amps. And then on air disappeared. Same behavior in USB. When I go to send, RX mode still on air and then the current dropped. Seems there is something not, not okay in the sequence between receive and transmit and I have to look into the manual, into the schematic what this problem is. I will first focus on this problem 
because I think the modulation is not a big problem when FM uh, is okay and USB not. It can only be in the in the audio amplifier for AM and SSB in the switching, dial switching and so on. But first I will focus on the power problem. I opened the PA. This is a filter unit with the relays. The power supply is unplugged. Now I can flip it around. I use some plastic for better isolation. I think there is no power on it, but maybe on the auxiliary connectors here some power is fed back, but now it is isolated. And we have here the power brick now. And here are two trimmers for biasing. One moment. I will turn it around a little bit. We have the two trimmers. This is the first one for the final transistors. And here is the second trimmer. Hope you can see it for the driver transistors. And these biasings I found were set to a rather high value. So the bias was beyond the setting which is mentioned in the uh, manual. I don't know who did this. The bias current is 250 milliamp for the driver and 250 milliamp for the PA. Totally 0 0.5 amps, but not 10 amps as we had. Uh, uh, reduced it now and it's within a reasonable uh, limit and I will do the alignment procedure according to the uh, manual to the service. I don't know why someone did this. 10 amp is approximately 50%. Maybe someone had the crazy idea to make a class A amplifier out of it, but it's a, a push-pull configuration. There is no class A. We need class B biasing at the threshold or class AB a little bit more current or voltage than the cutoff voltage so that uh, both transistors have a very low current uh, without signal so the the angel of the conductivity of a, a sine wave is a little bit more than 180 degrees and the setting in the manual states is a very low current i will do it uh, online now as it is a manual and then i can close the pa again the diodes these thermal diodes for the uh, Thermal stabilization, this one here and this one here, these two diodes, this and this are okay. I measure them. These are diodes with a threshold voltage of 2 volt. Yes, you hear right, 2 volt. There are three diodes in series which generate a threshold of approximately 2 volt, which is, uh, which is okay for these diodes. Okay, but now let's start the alignment. First, a short explanation of these thermal compensation diodes. They're called silicon varistors. Type here we have is SV03YS. And the three indicates that we have three diodes in series, as we see here in this diagram. And the threshold is for this diode. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Where is it here? At, for example, 10 milliamp, we have 2 volt. This is the range where this diode is. My first fear was that these diodes are faulty, uh, interrupted. But uh, luckily they are okay, I measured the voltage. So we can continue now with the alignment. The alignment procedure is rather simple. <coughs> no output power. Both trimmers are set for minimum current and then we go to transmit with, without any output signal, unkeyed uh, CW mode. It is not written that it is unkeyed, but uh, I assume it is unkeyed. No key down. The current has to be measured, the total input current as a reference. Then first VR1, this is the trimmer, the bias trimmer for the driver is set to 250 milliamp more current and then VR2 is set for another 
250 milliamps more. So we have a total current of 0 0.5 amp more than the current uh, without VR1 and VR2 settings. This I will do now. The transmitter is switched on. We have a current of 1.7 amp without any biasing and then I increase the driver 250 milliamp more that's 1.97 1.97 and another 250 milliamp more now with the final stage that is 1 1.23 2.23 okay Now I switch it off. Okay. This is a very long time. By the way, I've unplugged the output filter. So the PA has no load. I connected my dummy load for safety reasons. We had no output signal. Just for safety reasons, uh, this way to the uh, coax cable. My question is, where can I obtain such plugs, such coaxial plugs for the uh, boards, these small plugs, without slaughtering such a transceiver? I didn't find them, or maybe I used the wrong uh, keywords for search in the net. Is there a special name for it or a supplier or I need some of these cables with an adapter to BNC uh, to uh, have, a, uh, have a secure connection, not these clamps. It's a little bit too dangerous. If you know something about these, please tell me in the comments of the video. Thanks in advance. Just to confirm the odd behavior when switching off the transmit mode back to RX. There is an input signal. Hope you can read it. TXB from the IF unit, which controls the bias for the pre-driver. There is no alignment for the driver. There is the alignment of the trim pot, and for the final stage, there's also trim pot. We align these two pots, and with this signal TXB, the uh, transmit mode is switched on, and in RX case, the bias is switched off. I will check the input of the bias. It's this pin I found. At the moment it is zero. When I switch on to transmit, sorry, wrong, wrong one, 7.48. You see here on air the indication. Hope you can see it. This little red. Yes, it's visible and then switch it off. Now you should be able to see this here, the light. And now I switch off the send mode. On air is still indicating. Now it is off, as you see, when we see the voltage dropped very slowly and then suddenly it dropped. I have to look for the uh, switching part where we can see the uh, TXP signal generated, switched on and switched off. And now we have a reasonable behavior of the transmit path except the delayed uh, switching. When we go to mode FM, for example, and when I go to send, I 
Ich kenne den Cruiser Power. Full Scale ist 100 Watt. Wenn er gerade zu 20 Watt, we have 6 Watt. Und wenn er increase the power, the current also increases. Now we have 10 Watt, the 10 Amps, 80 Watt, nearly 90 Watt. We have uh, nearly 20 Amps. When I reduce the power, the current also decreases. And when I go to, for example, to CW, when I go to send. <coughs> The current is approximately 2 amp unkeyed. And when I increase the power, 80 watt and more. You see we have now reasonable behavior of the input current and the output power. The first check of the problem with the delayed RX TX switching is to check the input from the transmit receive switch the behavior whether this contact goes high when the switch is released the uh, send receive button connects to ground in case of send or transmit it's in parallel with the uh, microphone jack so if this is the send receive button and it's in parallel with the microphone check and it's accessible here on the on the board here we have the uh, voltage open in case of receive and when i push in the send button then we have the indication of transmit i hope you can see it no you can't see it one moment now you can see it and when I measure the PTT or the SS voltage, SS means standby switch, it is low. And when I release the button, switch back to receive, the voltage jumps up, but still we have transmit condition. That means the SS line, and now it is switched off, the S line, SS line is not a problem. We have to go deeper in the schematic again go to transmit voltage is zero go to receive again voltage jumps up but still red uh, light is on and now it's switched off so the problem is in the conversion of this voltage because the txb voltage which is going high in case of uh, transmit has to be inverted from the ss voltage from the standby switch voltage so we have to go into the circuit where this is done in the service manual we have a rather good circuit description especially for the switching between transmission and reception it is shown here to make it short we have here the standby switch so this is a switch on the front panel or the microphone ptt switch when it is connected to ground and this transistor gets conductive because the emitter is positive this is an analog switch pin 12 is only a transmit inhibit txi that means when the transmit is inhibited and transmit is possible maybe it is restricted due to the frequency range or so then this signal goes out into the break-in circuit goes this is bypassed via these diodes this is a time constant which also is active the signal is high and it goes into the trx unit and when this is high the pin goes low and this is also pmp so this goes high and this is txp this is the signal we have seen which is not switched off instantaneously it takes several seconds until it goes down so the problem is anywhere here between this which is okay we have seen this line or this uh, rail which is called ss is okay so the problem must be here in this path so maybe the, the switch is not okay or we have a problem with the time constant which is in parallel because uh, when this signal is high then this signal goes low 
while this diodic capacitor is discharged and this goes high over this diode. And when this signal goes low, the SS signal, when the PTT contact is released, then we have here high, and then uh, this capacitor is charged up. And then it goes also too low here. It is a little bit of delay. Maybe we have a problem with the time constants here or any other problem. So we have to go step by step. First check the input of this break-in module. When this is OK, we go to the TRX module and see where the problem is. This is the uh, schematic. Values are not given here, but values are given in the, in the schematic. This is only a, a timing circuit, not more, but it's very useful for understanding. And you see when uh, debugging such a transceiver, uh, paperwork is necessary. It makes no sense to poke around like an idiot. Take your time. 50% is paperwork. The other 50% is measurement. So let's start with the measurement of this unit. Now we will follow the signal. The whole chain, as we have seen, I will show you on the picture where we are and how fast the voltage is switched off and on and where the delay uh, is located and where we have to look for the fault. Let's start here at this pin, pin 8. This is NSS, I think negative standby switch. That means when the switch is grounded, when I switch on to transmit, then this uh, pin 8 goes high and when I release the switch, this pin should go low. I'm at this pin 8. Voltage is low and why, when I switch the transmit mode on, you see the voltage rises, 7.3 volt. We have transmit, the LED on air, uh, you can't see it but I can tell it to you. You see the LED on air with red. Now I switch the transmit off, switch back to RX. We still have on air the red LED lit. Still lit. Now it's off. But we have seen the voltage dropped much, much earlier. So the path from here to here is okay. This and this. These both points are reacting without any delay. And now we go from this point to check the whole path to pin 3. Now I'm at pin 3 of the break-in unit. Output voltage is low. Pin 8 is also low. 11, 10, 9, 8 is also low. Yes. Number 3. 1, 2. Oh, this is fuzzy. Now I switch on to transmit. The voltage rises. There's a voltage stop over the diodes in the BK unit. So we have a little bit less than the 7.5 volt. But now I switch off the transmit mode back to RX. The LED on air is lit. Voltage disappears, LED is still lit. And still lit. And now it's off. But we have seen that even the output, this pin 3, acts instantaneously upon the change of the standby switch here well, this switch goes through undelayed to pin 3 so here we have absolutely no delay the delay must happen here in this chain transistor or anywhere else and TXP is delayed so I go next step to pin 2 of the TRX unit We can expect at this point, point 2, in TX mode approximately 2.9 volt only. We have here 6 point, nearly 7 volt, but we have here voltage divider, 15k, 100k. This is not enough attenuation to come down to 2.9 volt, but we have the input resistance 
of this transistor is a voltage divider. I don't know how many kilo ohm, but I think it's a low ohmic divider. So 2.9 volt is a nominal voltage according to the schematic. I will measure now at point 0.2. We are now at point 0.2. RX mode, now I switch on the TX. Okay, what should we have? 2.9 volt, we have 2.69, 2.7, that's okay. The LED on air is lit. Yes, it's a multimeter. Now I switch off, back to RX again. The LED is still lit. And now it's getting dark. Now I repeat the whole test, again point 0.2, I switch to TX, the LED on air is lit, we are in transmit mode, now I switch back to RX, the voltage stops and now the LED also got, got dark, now the uh, switching between RX and TX is rather fast. I will try it a, a third time to confirm it, but I don't see any delay in the in this pin. And now I switch off. Still running TX. And now it got went down, so the delay is also not in this path up to here. It is okay. Here it was okay. The whole path is okay. This transistor has no effect because uh, when you would have a problem here with a conductive transistor, we would even have here no voltage, but we have here voltage. So we go to pin 5. It's a TXB output. And check what's happening between here and here. And now I'm at pin 5 or TXB. I switch on to transmit. 7.45 volt. It's okay. And now I switch back to RX. And the voltage is still present. And now it is dark. So we see it's a little bit surprising for me that the time delay is between here and here, but there is nothing. The time delay is between here and here, but there is nothing which could cause a delay. I don't understand. I have to look at it. I was scratching my head, looking around what it could be and what to do. Then I found something. First I couldn't believe what I see. Then I took my microscope and uh, I can see it only with my bare eyes. I don't need a microscope, but to show it on the on the video, it's better to use a microscope. It's on the TRX board. There is a a damage. I can't uh, understand in the moment what it is, but I will show it on the uh, screen of the laptop. It's a resistor in the corner of the board. 470 ohms. We have here the two pads, but here it's difficult to show <coughs> with the lighting. It's a, a gray, looks like a gray powder or so, or a little bit silver colored. I'm not sure what it is. It's, I would say this gray, gray yes, powder, maybe oxide, whatever it is. I can't identify it. This is from here to here. It's underneath this resistor from here to here. A short of sorts, short circuit. I really don't understand what it is, how it came into this location, what happened. But it is there. And uh, well, this could be the, the cause of the problem. When you have a look into the uh, schematic, it could declare the behavior. It is this resistor R151 on the TOX board at the corner where we have seen this uh, gray powder. Looks like it is conductive. And when we go into the schematic, we can see this, this resistor. We 
when we assume that this R151 470 ohm is bypassed then the base of this transistor is directly connected to the collector and to the emitter to the collector and then to the emitter to ground and this makes this transistor always a little bit conductive and when we switch off the voltage when it goes down then uh, this transistor may be uh, still is a little bit conductive if the voltage does not drop down to zero within a fraction of a second so uh, some residual uh, conductivity of the transistor and there is only a very less conductivity needed makes this transistor conductive we have here a voltage divider 470 ohm and one r52 is 10k okay it's a 10k resistor this is to uh, block the base uh, connect the base to the emitter to make this uh, transistor safe uh, blocking when there is only a low voltage but if this transistor is bridged we could have this strange behavior i will replace this transistor i will take it out luckily it's accessible <coughs> and mr murphy is not right in general faults uh, are always there where we have no accessibility but here it is uh, in a good location i don't need to take out the whole unit so i can replace it <coughs> when i leave this unit in place the resistor is removed i checked it it was 470 ohms it was 468 dot something that's okay the resistor is not a problem but we see a lot of dirt this is some copper visible what is this i don't know what what was going on there it looks like that something dropped on it or fell through the uh, through the case or through the slots of the cover i don't know what it is and caused this damage suspicious suspicious i have to clean it to take out all the the old uh, solder clean it to prevent any short circuits from here to here to prevent any short circuit between these pads because this is a, a, i think the ground level so i have thoroughly to, to clean it first uh, use a spray wash not a contact cleaner simply spray wash it's based on on isopropyl alcohol or similar i can take out the dirt until the pads are clean and then I can remove the solder I use some flux and then a small desoldering de braid it's, it's good for this purpose I can move it over the contacts now it should be clean the two pads are clean but here this looks bad it looks like a damage of, of acid or so i know this picture when a electrolytic cap is leaking here's the bare copper this is okay it's green what was this same problem here hope not ah. my only explanation is that there fell a drop of acid on it there are no electrolytics in the vicinity which could leak so it could only be from outside fell in it okay i will uh, resolder this and place a new uh, resistor in it and this i have to look what it is by the way, if there another problem, or it's only some uh, flux or so from the uh, soldering. Okay, I think it's only some some old flux. I can remove it. This looks rather good. Yes, this is old flux. I hope it's not acid. <laughs> so I can clean it. Uh, 
so it's a fiber also has to go yes that's okay I could clean it with some additional uh, spray wash and the uh, paper wrapped around my tweezer and with this it's possible to clean it and now it looks uh -huh, now it looks I think perfect it was only some uh, some flux or so this looks not so nice I will, uh, I will resolder it with a piece of wire you can see I can scratch it away rather easy the, the enamel it's not not very tight something happened here the damage here is resolded I took a very fine solder tip the two pads are also resolded and then I will place a new resistor on it 470 ohms and as it happens Saturday evening all shops are closed today and tomorrow and the resistor I have is a little bit too big but I think it's not a problem I will shift it a little bit in this direction can I contact this pad directly here to this pad and this where it should be and I do not contact here on the lower side but this doesn't matter I only have to prevent any short circuit from here to here with this pad but I think this will work and should be good enough the resistor is in this pads okay here also I've checked it it is better as it looks we also have contact on the uh, tab behind this um, solder here it is still okay I measured it electrically so I will test the transceiver now now I shall check whether it's okay now go to send see on air and then I go back to receive mode mode is by the way USB problem is obviously not solved again still a considerable delay there is another problem and this is now a good moment to have a break to end part one of the video about this Kenwood TS 450S obviously we have a problem anywhere else the damage we have found is not the reason it was necessary to cure it no discussion but there is obviously another problem anywhere in the timing circuit the timing circuit is rather complicated between CW, SSB, FM with break-in capability Vox circuit and so on there are many connections between various modules so there is a problem anyhow stay tuned stay healthy see you on this channel